by this video, I'm going to want to give you a brief, uh, well, I'm going to try and be brief, uh, overview on footings, uh, foundations, and concrete. Um, the footing, now there's a little terminology here, okay, what we call the footing is the actual part that bears the weight of the structure, okay, it's in contact with the earth. Okay, the foundation, what we call a foundation, it can be the foundation wall itself, or it can be the system as a whole, the foundation system of the wall and the footing and whatever else may be involved with it. <clears throat> so there, there's a little bit of confusion there, but uh, if, if the book or I say footing, we're talking about the part that is at the very bottom in the ground. Okay, uh, come on mouse. All right, um, <clears throat> here's a, a chart about frost penetration. And we can see here in, uh, in North Georgia, we're like at three to four inch uh, frost depth, meaning that's the depth that the soil will freeze. Because when you put, place a footing, it should, the bottom of the footing should be six inches below the frost penetration depth. That prevents <clears throat> the footing from moving when the earth freezes. Okay, um, when a, it, depending upon what area of the country and the type of soil that there is, that will determine the size of your footing. And um, commercial construction always requires a soil test to be done uh, before building a commercial building. <clears throat> Whereas with a house, houses are pretty standard. So whatever works in that part of the country usually works in that part of the country, okay? because the soil is pretty consistent. But the, the soil bearing capacity uh, and the size of the structure itself will determine what type and size of footings that you have. Okay, so most of the time when we talk about a, a footing and a foundation wall, uh, we have something like this. Uh, the footing is the part in the soil at the very bottom. <clears throat> and it, it has a steel reinforcing bar that go through it and the size and the number of those depends on the soil type and the, the type of the structure okay but the loads from the structure you can see the green arrows that's kind of indicates the load comes down and when it gets into the footing it, it kind of spreads it out over a larger area <clears throat> generally and this is just a general rule that the width of the foundation wall will be the thickness of the footing and two times the width of the foundation wall for the width of the footing. That's just kind of a general rule. Um, it, poor soil, like sandy soil uh, or soil with a lot of silt in it may require a wider footing. <clears throat> um, da, 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 fireplaces and chimneys will, will require a larger footing because they're heavy and that weight is more concentrated in a smaller area, so it requires a larger, a larger footing. Um, where you have a uh, a hill or a slope, <clears throat> you may have uh, what's called a stepped footing. If you're not going to have a basement in the structure, if you're just going to have a crawl space, uh, you may have a stepped footing in which the footing actually steps up or down, you know, as you're going uh, along the hillside. And it's, it's um, <clears throat> in units based on what you're building with, if you're building with concrete blocks, the steps are usually 16 inches tall because that's the height of two blocks. If you're doing a poured concrete wall, uh, then the steps can be, you know, whatever the wall form, uh, wall form size is. Um, Okay, let's see, I thought I had copied this to somewhere else, but <clears throat> foundation walls are, are gonna go from the first floor uh, down to the footing. Can be the basement wall, and there's a variety of types and, and sizes. Here we see a uh, different types of materials. Uh, most common in residential construction now is, is cast concrete walls, maybe a concrete block wall. You don't see this as often in, in uh, residential construction anymore. Most everything is poured walls now, uh, but they still they still do some with concrete block. It just depends on what part of the country you're in. Uh, it's very rare <clears throat> to have structural brick or structural stone uh, for a foundation wall. 
and here in the southeast you will never see a wood foundation because of termite damage okay uh, ta -ta -ta. here we have some different shapes or types of footings and foundation systems where this is the most common like i said they, they the book calls it a t foundation uh, you can have a slab foundation in which the the foundation and footing part is actually poured monolithically with the slab <clears throat> Okay, uh, a pier or a post um, in which a pier would be like a square or a round footing with some type of column sitting on top of it. Um, here's a, you know, just a graphic example of, of, you know, a T foundation, your footing, your concrete block wall, in which this case it's using an, an L-shaped block and the, <clears throat> the slab floor is poured resting on the wall uh, that can be common uh, it, you know it's 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 common possibility here we have an example of of the t foundation as a basement wall uh, with you know the concrete floor being down down lower <clears throat> and this the foundation wall is actually the basement wall now in these examples that that i'm showing you here um, a poured concrete wall and a and a concrete block wall are, can be interchangeable. Okay, depends upon the method of construction. Uh, anytime you have a brick veneer finish on the outside, you have to have a brick ledge that supports the weight of that brick because it doesn't just hang on the wall. It has to have some type of foundation under it. Uh, and in this case, we use two different size blocks. We use a 12 inch wide block up to that point and then an eight inch going up if you were doing a uh, a poured wall <clears throat> excuse me a a cast in place wall uh, you would have a brick ledge cast into the edge of the wall or it could be just flat you know as in this example here here we got a, a concrete foundation wall and then a masonry block wall going on up uh, here we have a the slab foundation or a turn down slab <clears throat> in which you, you have a width based on the, the size of construction and, and soil bearing capacity, and then the depth of it also, uh, <clears throat> in which the floor and the footing is all poured together. Now here's an example of a wall built of two layers of brick that are structural, uh, and, and it's very rare to see this in construction now. Uh, you, you may see it some in commercial construction where they're going for a certain type of look for the building, but you will almost never see this in in residential construction anymore <clears throat> this is the most common what you're going to see in residential except for there may be a brick ledge added to the outside of it and if you have a, a basement with um, interior block walls uh, you're going to have a, a turn down inside the building to carry the extra weight for that block wall on that, on the on, on there. Uh, here we have an example of a, a pier foundation. Okay, in which you have a footing, which could be square, could be round. <clears throat> in this case, we have a wood timber that sits on it that carries the beam for the first floor of the house. Um, most often, you're going to see this in uh, in crawl spaces. Whereas if, if you have a basement situation, then this is going to be a longer column. Um, and the only difference is the height. You know, here we call it a, a pier because it's short. If it's a column, because it's taller. Okay. Uh, and here are some different examples of, you know, concrete on wood, uh, you know, all concrete, concrete and a steel beam, brick or masonry block on top of it. Uh, <clears throat> this will be very common uh, in what you what you see in a house in that you'll have a um, a four inch pipe or an adjustable jack post in this case it has an, an i beam or a steel beam that's acting as the carrying the load of the of the floor it could be a wood beam also um, that, that's just a very common method of it and here's an ex <clears throat> excuse me an example of how the floor framing uh, it, how it all kind of goes together with a basement wall here. 